Hello YouTube, um, as you probably guessed this isn't my usual video format. Um, I tinker with other stuff apart from 3D as well, including electric motors, or at least I'm a beginner. And there isn't that much on YouTube in terms of kind of programming your own controller and making it work the way you want, specifically with this type, the KT type of controller. I should say right here at the start. Um, got it from AliExpress for about 30 quid. And because I'm building this scooter out of junk on eBay, we did the cleaned the motors out, new bearings, new paint job. Now I'm on the stage where I've got to power it and kind of see what kind of performance I can get out of a quite a dodgy setup with these batteries from disposable vapes. Plenty of them here. And I'm trying to charge them to get to 48 volts. Kind of power on this thing and see how it works with the motor. And I just want to go over the OSEC parameter configurator where you solder a few cables to the controller. I'll show you where. Um, actually, I'll attach all the documents and everything to the manual in the description. So if you want to give it a read or try it out yourself, you'll have all the resources there. Like an SD link programmer, so you connect the board up to the PC. Four cables, five volts ground, swim and reset, I think, but keeps popping out the last one. It's a bit annoying. Um, since there's not much, I'll just try to run you down the basics and kind of explain what problems I've had with the program with the configurator so far, what program, what problems I had with the controller itself. And, um, actually, first of all, since I'm here with the scooter, I'll run you down the problems that I've got currently. So, with the OG software, um, this is still original programming on this. It only spins up to 40 kilometers an hour. I think it's sine wave, but regardless of that, it's not spinning to the speed I want. And it makes a really weird humming noise on the motor itself um, and it's like the programming was different on both controllers before I flashed this one because the motor would spin here quietly normally it would grind a little bit at low RPM and then it would smooth out but with this one it would really moan in the beginning and then there would be this bump and it would start spinning normally, very smoothly. So I flashed this one because it was having that issue. I tried all the settings, the P and C settings, I tried different variations of those settings, nothing worked. And um, yeah, I've got different problems now. <laughs> so it's jumping from one thing to another. Uh, currently I'm waiting for the battery to charge, so I'm doing it in two banks, two 6S. And what I do is I flash a new config. So I have to walk all the way out and come back in, plug it all in to the scooter, to the rear motor, and run the, the config, try it out if it doesn't work. Go back to the PC and start a different config. A bit of a hit or miss, really, but I have figured out a few things that I'll be able to share with you. Um, the LCD type is a LCD free display. I'm just using like a temporary throttle just to get the analog signal in just to see how the motor will spin 
and um, oh, I've got all the fancy like twist throttle and everything, hydraulic brake. But that will be set up only after I've figured out the, the controller itself, which is such a pain in the ass. Alright, let's go to the desktop view and I'll show you what I mean by, by what I've figured out so far. And here we are in the desktop view with OSEC parameter configurator up. You can download this from GitHub and it's got a great wiki to give it a bit of a read and figure out what all these settings mean. I found that I did have to change a few things right off the get-go, like battery current max, phase current, in fact some of these settings are a bit off from what I can read. Um, I haven't touched the gain I and gain P, although I do more or less know what they mean, it's to do with the PID controller I think. But I think these are more important values to figure out first. The default ones are like a perfect configuration of a motor, which I found not to be exactly true. I've given this article a bit of a read, which is really good, about using hall sensors as position encoders. Which um, And this is the exact motor I have in the scooter. Uh, 30 magnets and 27 coils. Now, because of this weird arrangement, it allows for a different, you could say, um, config for each of the degrees. And the difference between a 60 degree and a 120 degree motor, which you may have one or the other, is a 120 degree motor will never have all the Hall values at completely zero or completely one. It will always be zero zero one zero one zero 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 one or something like that. But in a sixty degree motor, you will have those extra two values, like right here, the first from zero to sixty, you've got zero zero zero, and one eighty to two forty, you've got one one one. So you've got to figure out which motor you have. And in theory, the mathematics check out to be perfect, where all the values correspond to exactly, this is exactly 0 degrees, this is 60, this is 120, but in reality I haven't found that to be the case, or at least I've remodeled this motor in Cinema 4D, and I've noticed that to get a different value, like, um, different config for the all for all the free hall sensors the angle is not perfect and it can be not perfect by quite a few degrees and these are the values I found by kind of turning the magnets and just visually looking if the magnets overlap the one pole or the other and by doing this like visual way of, of discovering what's what's going on. I found that some of the values can be off even by 9 degrees. 180 degrees and 0 are both um, accurate, but 247 that's 7 degrees too much, that's 8 degrees not enough, that's 9 degrees not enough. So it's um, 7 and 7 repeats here, so there is some kind of offset, it's, it's not perfect. And another thing is with OSEC is all the value ranges are from 0 to 255, so you're going to have to calculate how much is 67 degrees from 0 to 60 to 250, from 0 to 255, and that's pretty easy to do. So you just divide 255 by 360, you get this 0.7, copy that, and whatever number you want to transform into the 255 value, you just look at, let's say this value 67, I want that, I want to know what do I put here. You just put 67, and you multiply it by the 0.0708, you get 47 here. And, um, 48. So these are the default values, 1, 43, 86, 128. So 43 is exactly 60 degrees, it even says that in the manual. Um, 
we go to hall angle, there we go. The default values of 143, 86, 128 correspond to the angle 0, 60, 120, 180. But another problem is how can <clears throat> the value 1 correspond to the angle 0? Um, I don't know how that works, so I, I changed it to 0. And you have this long list of experimental settings, and these are all your settings. Every time you make a change, it, um, it's saved in this long list here. So one of these settings. It's a bit buggy. Um, for example, my last setting definitely wasn't leaving it at 1, 43, 86. These are the default settings. Everything about this is default, actually. Um, it's just weird how it works. So it's best if you take a screenshot and save it just in case it doesn't register anything. Um, definitely give the manual a read, because there is a lot that's left to scratch the head. Um, but I think I'm still working on figuring it out. I get completely different results by enabling rotor angle rotation correction. It seems to not work at all. Even though I don't have... It specifically says that if you have a ZHS or, or a controller starting with Z, uh, you have to disable interpolation and... The ang the ZVS, if that's the kind of controller you have, you have to disable the interpolation. But I found that disabling dynamic assist, uh, the enabling rotor angle correction or disabling interp interpolation, either settings, they, they work differently. Um, and I'm just getting very mixed results, so I'm doing more of a hit or miss, basically. Another thing I found is after writing the configuration, I can't get the screen to work correctly. None, none of the values except the voltage um, is, is showing up, the speed is not showing up. Um, the assist level does change as well, if you press the power button it does toggle, but apart from that I can't get any of the other parameters to work correctly. And if you are working with an electric scooter without uh, PAS sensor, the pedal assist, you have to enable the torque sensor right here. I found that without, if, if you do not enable this, it, the motor behaves very weirdly. It starts to ramp up, then ramp down completely independently from the throttle. So be careful with that. And be careful in changing the throttle ma minimum and throttle maximum. I changed this to zero and this to 255. And when I plugged in the, the controller, the motor just started spinning like crazy. Even with zero throttle, so I had to revert this back to default. I had the same problem working on a different scooter with an Arduino, so... It's something to do with the mapping. And I'll keep you guys updated if I figure out... Something. Um, <laughs> I figured out the hall angles so far, so we're making progress. I'm still a bit unsure what the correction angle is or the motor specific angle. Um, it's more like a hit or miss, I guess. Um, you can download an app on Android by a Bluetooth module, connect it to the controller, and you can change these values while the controller is uh, working. So there isn't that much <coughs> changing setting disconnect controller, plug it in and rinse and repeat a hundred times before it starts to work. It's it's a bit easier to work from a phone if, if you're working with the controller plugged in all the time. But as soon as I figure something out with, with the current motor I have, which is quite a common motor, I think many hub motors behave quite quite similarly to mine, whether it's it's definitely not perfect, I don't know why. Maybe maybe I've got something wrong, maybe I've done something wrong here, but I don't think so. Um, I tried it with different layouts of the... With different arrangements of the magnets. Um, offset, offset by however many degrees until I got the next configuration that worked, but it just... every time I try to rotate these magnets and look at the the angle that I get here at the um, below 
it's always not perfect. There's always some kind of offset. So whether that's to do with manufacturing issues or anything at all, it's just something I'll be figuring out and keeping you guys posted. So, um, it's nice that this exists. It's nice that we have the freedom to modify these controllers. Um, with certain settings, recently, today I just flashed it with, with a config um, where I changed the specific angle to um, 150 degrees and it worked really, really well, but there was hardly any speed. It was very quiet, the motor worked great. So it's it's a hit or miss. Um, I'll keep you guys updated. Oh, and before I do that, I just want to show you what you do when you write the configuration here. So um, let's find a good config that we can work with. This one seems all right. Torque sensor, switch to, yeah, let's disable that. I just put in 100, although I know the scooter will never go 100, I just put it in there, so there is no limiting factor. Here, 237. I remember 150. Oops, what just happened? 150 times this is 106. So let's put in 106. 106. And all right, I've got my GoPro on, so I'll be able to show you what happens from the perspective outside the monitor. You just click right configuration. And this code starts to show up. And you see that there's like a little light on your ST link, and I'll start to blink. There we go. And that's flashing beautifully. And then if it's flashed correctly, it'll say program memory success. And you can just press space bar to continue. If, however, you one cable gets disconnected during a flashing process, you are going to see that in the command line. It's going to show up as reset cable not connected or something like that. So you'll be able to diagnose it. There, there isn't really much to it. It's a pretty straightforward process. Anyway, guys, hope I could help you out. We'll see you in the next one.